anyone who tries to tell you they expected a start to the season like the start to the season we've had after the transfer window we had is a liar. Don't believe a word they ever say again. Hello and welcome to Club 4, part 7 of Non-League to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have two games in the Premier League. We're at home against Liverpool and away against Brighton. But the big news is that since you were last with me, things have been going awesome. We had that four-point opening video, um, but then we went on and picked up another six points in our next two matches. We've knocked Leeds out of the League Cup, which we're not. no one was really bothered about. Um, and then we did lose to Watford in the league. You know, that's losing to Watford. That You know, Watford's basically a cheat code in football manager so we've we've not lost a game against a team it's possible to lose against yet we don't play Man United for a while everyone else is officially beatable this is where we find ourselves in the Premier League after just five games we're on 10 points they say the target for safety at this level is 40 points we're a quarter of the way towards our points target for the season after just five games I'm not expecting the form to carry on but goodness me I'm enjoying it while it's happening, there is a little bit of a little bit of a downer on top of all that, though. Um, our star player for those early days of the season, McBurney, he did get injured. He is going to be out for another couple of months yet. He's torn his thigh muscle. Mitrovic is now fit though, um, Albright, and also slowly returning to fitness. Uh, but we've also picked up an injury to Shane Duffy, the ten million pound man who actually had come in and was playing really well. So a little bit of a, a slightly mixed up team compared to what we've had recently um, Mitrovic hasn't started a Premier League game for us yet and I don't know that Liam Moore has either I think this might be his first start coming up in fact there's ways to check these things Kev I know Mitrovic hasn't started a game yet Liam Moore has started the last three games i got to stop leaving a couple of days between making these videos. I have no idea what's going on. So anyway, this is the team that we're we're facing Liverpool with. Interestingly, look, all our best players are our defenders and wingers. The midfield and striker, not really doing the business yet. Although, obviously, we did have a striker who was doing the business. But he's injured and he's the one that I supposedly didn't like. But we've got Rinner in goal, a back four of Brian Moore, Mawson and Larson, Tainio in behind Cullen and Calderon as our midfield three. Mitrovic does start up front today, supported by Mitrovic and Hall as our two wingers. Abamyang still yet to prove that he's still got it, but you know he's a handy he's a handy older player to have around, just for the sake of having an older player around. Uh, tutoring and stuff we don't really have I say we don't really have a young striker to tutor we've got both Power and Thorn that we probably should be tutoring and you're all going to be cross at me down in the comments that they're not actually tutoring yet we'll set that up after the game um, right let's be passionate we don't we can't be assertive against Liverpool um, yeah let's give the uh, no one ever wants to give the fans a performance to cheer for no one cares at this level so I imagine we're going to absolutely throw this away now. But we have been playing really, really good football. Knocking the ball around nicely. It was disappointing against Watford, but we did we did get stronger as the game went on against Watford. We conceded the three goals quite early on in that game. And it looked towards the end like we might rescue a point, but we didn't quite have it in us. And that's without having our, uh, our star man, McBurney. I can't believe him. In the space of two episodes, he's gone from being the guy I want to get rid of because he's not good enough to our star striker. And the reason we're not playing as well as we were when we had him in the team, he's such an important member of the squad as that complete forward. He'll be back against it, luckily, because the games are quite well spaced out in the Premier League and we have regular international breaks. Although it was a three-month injury, he's probably going to miss less than 10 games for that. So it's not like a three-month injury down in the lower leagues where you miss half the season for it nearly. Right, passionate again. Who cares about the fans? Um, we haven't been the better team. Um, yeah, let's impress the media. There you go. We don't care about impressing the fans, but we will impress the media, hopefully. And put on a bit of a show in this second half. Although, to be fair, at home against Liverpool, I don't know how good Liverpool are in 2023. I think that's where we are. But presumably they're still a decent side. There's plenty of names in that team that I recognise still, which, bearing in mind how few Premier League players I recognise now, I'm quite impressed that there's names I recognise five years into the future. We've got Kovacic now, I saw Lamar out on the left wing. So they've got some decent players. Alexander-Arnold still knocking around. Salah is there as well. So, you know, this is probably still a pretty useful Liverpool team 
for us to even be competitive with them is more than we could have hoped for at the start of the season. What a save from Rinner there. And kind of keeps us in it a little bit. But Liverpool do have a corner and we need to we need to defend. And defend we do. And now we've got the chance to break clear. And it's Hall with space to run into. And he's got Mitrovic ahead of him. And other players charging through from midfield. But doesn't really make anything of it. This has been a one of those weird long highlights that usually end in a goal. And it's probably this goal. Yeah. Usually when you get these really long, weird end-to-end highlights... That's what happens. We've still played. I don't want to see the replay, really. I'm going to watch it. If they score again, I won't. I mean, it's a lovely little through ball. What can we do about that? We've got our we've got our backup centre-back on that side of the back four. Yes, he's played the last three games, but I didn't notice him. You didn't notice him. So, I can't complain too much. We're being competitive against these teams, and that's the important thing. Hall just sort of runs into an opposition player again. It's... It is a little bit of a worry because it's the second time we've seen him do that in the second half of this game, just running straight into opposition players. Let's Should we demand more? That feels like it might be, I don't know, we, we shouldn't be... OK, the, the attackers are focused, that's the important thing. We shouldn't really be demanding more. We're playing Liverpool and we're being competitive. That's all we can really hope for, but... Ah, let's keep demanding, and we've conceded another goal, and it, it could start to get messy now. We've been we've been due a good spanking all season long, and this might be where we pick up our first proper beating of the season. Remember, the important thing is getting to forty points. We're not going to get caught up in any silly ideas of top half finishes or anything like that. He did the chicken dance as he ran up, ran away there. He was so happy. Right, what can we do to? Try and not let this game get away from us. Calderon, we've got Mendy who can come on for Calderon, so that's a, that's a change we can make there. And I think I'm going to bring a Bamiyang on up front as well. But rather than having him play as the complete forward, we're going to switch him to Poacher and just try and get the best out of him. It doesn't necessarily get the best out of the players around him when we play him as a Poacher rather than a complete forward. But let's face it, they've not played particularly well anyway. So a Bamiyang might still have that individual spark that if we try to play to his strengths, he might just do something special. I'm clutching at straws a little bit. Right, Hall can come off. We're going to bring on Keegan. Keegan is an Everton youngster, so maybe he'll want to go out there and put on a bit of a show against against the rivals he's grown up with. There you go. We're going to try and get creative for the last five minutes. Nothing's happening. We've, um, we've had a decent amount of possession, but we've not had a shot on target in the entire game. And... Uh, I mean, that, that tells you all the story that needs telling, really. Liverpool have been in complete control without really getting out a second gear. Hopefully this doesn't happen too many more times as this season goes on. But Aubameyang is in there, tried to do something fancy with a little chip. And uh, it was rubbish. Didn't achieve anything. And presumably this is going to be Liverpool going and grabbing their third now as they race clear. Oh, it's a it's a, a, a desperate clearance. Matriza lumps it forward, and I think that that's got to be that now. Why are we dragging this out? We don't need to see another highlight. <laughs> don't score again. Two nil is respectable. Three nil, and we start to look a little bit, a little bit rubbish. We don't want to look a little bit rubbish. Right, two nil. We can live with two nil. Um, team talk. I think we could, we weren't really unlucky. It wasn't really a good effort. Let's have a go at them. I want better than that. I want us to at least be getting shots away. And it didn't upset them, so that's good. Hopefully we can play a little bit better against Brighton now. No change for the Brighton game there, mainly because I'm not entirely confident we have any players here who can improve what we've got over here. It's uh, Who knew that squad depth would be an issue with this squad? It, I can't imagine. If only we'd have been able to sign a few more players. What a silly goose I am. For not spending money back in the summer when I could have done. Um, I expect nothing to cut out. Recent run of bad results. What? Um, yeah, but let's step up our game. I don't think we have had a run of bad results. We've lost two games in a row. That's it. Is that really what counts as a run of bad results these days? We've, we're, what, six games into the season. And we've won three, drawn two, lost two. That's that's a bad run of results. I don't think it is for a newly promoted team. That's an incredible set of results. But if we've managed to motivate the team, that's all that really matters. Seeing Isaac's success there is uh, giving me flashbacks to the FM Creators Cup this year. 
flashbacks I don't need to be having. So if he could get off the pitch, that would be uh, that would be nice. Wouldn't object to that. But fairly tame header from a corner that goes flying over. And similar to the Liverpool game, we're not really we're not really getting on the ball. Larson though, <laughs> Larson doing what Larson can. And it just whistles past the post. If we can get another opportunity for him to have a free kick from that sort of range, I'm fairly confident he's not going to miss twice in one game. But it's the only real attack. or It's, it's the only highlight-worthy attack we've had in that first half. Um, we haven't been the better team here. Uh, we haven't been unlucky. Ugh, I don't want to tell him to play without pressure. This is hard. Man management when we're not very good is difficult. Especially when we're not, when not very good, but I'm hoping for a win. Um, I don't care about the fans. Um, let's try that one. There you go. I fired him up by saying not good enough. There you go. Let's raise let's raise raise the standards around here. We might not be the most individually talented team, but if you look at our eleven, compare it to their eleven, we should be capable of beating Brighton. weren't Brighton down with us last year? Brighton were the team who won the championship last year, weren't they? Didn't they come up with us? So really, we should be capable of putting on a bit of a show against Brighton. We went to their place and won right at the end of last season, if I recall correctly. So we should be able to do it again. So presumably they strengthened their squad in the summer, maybe signed a few players. The only one we spent any money on is currently injured because he's 31 and that's going to happen. Uh, right, Brian now. What can, we, what can we build from the back here? Moore plays it forward towards no one at all, really. And that was just... It was pretty poor, but we are doing some nice pressing here. Just putting the putting the Brighton back line under a little bit of pressure. If this is what passes for a highlight in this game, then my word, poor old Brighton and Fulham fans for this season. And there is Isaac success, just reminding me that he exists and that maybe I should have started him in that second leg. But if you haven't seen the Creators Cup stuff yet, it was from a couple of weeks ago. You should probably watch it. There's one match on this channel, one match on Dr. Benji's channel. And... Uh, I mean, if you're not going to watch it, let's just assume I won and I'm the better man. I'm I'm the better man, regardless of what happened in a, in a computer game. I'm, uh, I mean, look at me. I'm a, I'm a handsome young man. But anyway, young. I used to be young. Can we try and win a football match? We're not very good. We've been playing so well. And that Watford game has just knocked the umph out of us a little bit. This time I'm going to bring a Bamiyang on and try and play him as a complete forward. Last time we tried to get the team to play for him, it didn't work. Let's try to get him to play for the team. Perhaps he was a bad signing, but you saw that I didn't really have any other options at all. Maybe I need to play him and Mitrovic up front together. I've had a couple of people suggest that down in the comments, but who do you sacrifice? I guess this midfield three isn't playing particularly well together. The only problem is our two wide men can't drop back into these areas, so they've got to play as a three like that, or as, as a wide two. So if we stick another man up with a Bamiyang... Really, we've got to sacrifice Tainio and go to a 4-2-4. And a 4-2-4 for a newly promoted team in the Premier League seems absolutely insane. That can't be the right thing to do in this situation. Surely. Surely. Um, let's get creative. Come on, we've got to have a goal in us for these guys. Should we try it? The problem is we don't have Mitrovic. We've already taken him off. Should we bring on Freddie Power and stick him, bring him on for Tainio? I don't even know what type of striker Freddie Power is. Is the game still going on? Let's pause the game. We know we want Aubameyang to be a poacher. Power is an advanced forward. Well, that's worked for home, that combination. So let's try that. It's very attacking. It's probably too attacking. But if we're going to try this against any team, then I guess one of the teams that came up with us are the, most like, are the ones that it's most likely to maybe work against. I'm not that confident, though. Can we get the ball forward, though, lads? Liam Moore seems to really struggle in this system, just generally doing something positive with the ball. He's not he's not got the same quality on the ball as our other defenders have. Calderon, though, plays it forward for Powell to chase. It was a poor pass and a really half-hearted chase, and it's not Powell, it's Power. Powell's, Powell's Mick Powell. This isn't Mick Powell, this is someone called Power. But Power does much better that time, and if only he had a finish. If only he had a world-class veteran alongside him that he could have squared it through to a, for a tap-in, but apparently he didn't see him there and tried to take all the glory. He wanted the power for himself. Look at that from Mawson. That's a quality tackle. But this has been a, it's been a better performance than against Liverpool, but still not 
as good as it was for those first few games. Although Power is in again here. He's got Aubameyang to support again. And again, he doesn't use him. And he fires wide. The, the system is showing promise. I don't think Power is necessarily a man to be a part of it. Because he seems very selfish, very wasteful. And maybe not very good. More with a big ball over the top. Their last chance for Power to chase something. And it's a terrible pass. We've already talked about Liam Moore. And his distribution and just quality on the ball in general. And lack of it. And that was demonstrated beautifully for me there. I, it's, I could even, I, um, if I if I wanted to edit it together, I could edit it together so that it meshed together perfectly and maybe look like a an analytical genius. Just a shame I'm not a tactical genius. Should be aggressive because that wasn't good enough. That was a team we should have we should have put up more of a fight against. Maybe it's not going to be as much of a fun season as I hoped it would be at the start of the episode when I was recording that happy, happy intro. Let's see when we're going to come back. We don't want, I don't want loads of episodes of misery, but it's too early in this season to work out how, what kind of season we're going to have. We've had a very positive episode and a very negative episode. So let's not leave it too long. Let's come back somewhere around either Chelsea or Man United. We could do Man United and Arsenal. I mean, that is going to be two defeats though. So maybe we do Huddersfield and Man United and try and have a, a positive game, followed by a thumping. And then from there, we can judge if, OK, it's a relegation battle. Let's rush through it. Or it might be a fun season yet. Who knows? If you have enjoyed it, though, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.